I think people often reduce inclusion to, oh, we need to have a bit more diverse research teams, right? We need to have a bit more a diverse group of researchers, we need to have more people of color, we need to have more women, we need to have more people with disabilities, more people um, from LGBTQS per populations in our research teams. But I think inclusive research actually is much more. It is about creating an environment in which diverse perspectives, methodologies can thrive. And so inclusion is in, in some ways a problematic term because it always assumes that we're just kind of adding people. You know, we're making the research team a little bit more colorful. We're just adding people to existing structures, methodologies, and ways of doing research. And I think inclusion, inclusion and inclusive research actually means to think about how do we change not only who does the research, but what kind of research do we do? How does the research that we do actually creates impact for diverse populations? It is so important to include historically marginalized groups. We know that research shows that these individuals are underrepresented along the whole pipeline. When you look at research teams, they tend to underrepresent black and racialized and indigenous students as part of the trainee groups. And that sort of uh, reflects in the whole pipeline in terms of researchers who are independent researchers who are pursuing various lines of work. And again, when you see the impact of that work, it's also underrepresented in terms of societal impact of that work. For example, um, if I look at my own discipline, um, one of the reasons that there were uh, so few women um, in political science until just recently had to do with the idea that you know politics was for men and leaders were men, and in a settler colony like Canada. Um, they were going to be white and, and European origin. So, so the study of politics kind of um, started to put um, implicit limits on those that didn't look um, like that. And um, at the same time, the discipline did not seriously engage with issues like immigration or racism or, or gender. And I think we can find different parallels in other um, disciplines. And we can only um, challenge those kinds of ideas if we create different kinds of opportunities for those that haven't seen themselves represented. I think all of us are still at the beginning of thinking about what inclusion actually means, particularly when we think beyond this as a human resource problem, when we actually think about methodologically what inclusion means and how do we include, uh, create cultures of research as well as research programs that benefit diverse populations and that also make uh, the research culture that we have hospitable uh, to people from diverse backgrounds, right? That they can actually flourish. Because what we can do is, of course, we can you know, have a, a targeted hiring initiative to hire black faculty members, which is very, very important. But if we don't create an environment where black faculty members can actually thrive, then this doesn't solve our problem. People are going to leave. Right? And so I think what we are really looking about, what we really need to start looking at, how do our existing research cultures and work cultures impede upon um, an, an inclusive approach? And you know, one thing that I can tell you is, for example, our work culture. So my brother is, a, my brother-in-law is a research scientist, a research chemist, and when he did his postdoc, he had to work six days a week from eight in the morning to eight at night. You cannot do that work if you have childcare or elder care or any kind of other responsibilities. You basically need somebody who either does all the housework at home so that you can work all the time. If you have disabilities, you might not be able to work at that speed and that um, intensity. Right? So in creating an inclusive environment really has to happen at um, different levels, at the culture, at the habits, the traditions, the structure of the work that really needs to take into account what the different work needs of different people are. It's not that people don't have the qualifi qualifications, but we actually need to attract people who, um, whose life uh, work balance is, uh, requires that they um, cannot work from six days a week from eight to eight, for example. That's not a, an option for many people. So um, in a country like Canada, it's important to emphasize historically marginalized groups um, that have been missing from the research landscape. Um, and this is because we are actually becoming more diverse, not less diverse, because of things like immigration. So at one level, this can be seen as just symbolic, like that if we are, um, you know, a, a democratic, multicultural, uh, society that is on the road towards reconciliation with indigenous people, that 
um, the research field is going to kind of somehow look more like Canada. But at, it goes much deeper than this because um, I think at a more basic level, this is really about knowledge building and it's core to what we do at the university, what is core to what we do as scholars. So, I mean, what can uh, science and medicine gain from also considering indigenous knowledge and non-Western medicine? Um, how can that aid us in health or in well-being or in the sustainability of our, our planet? Um, what do we learn as social scientists um, or legal scholars by understanding governance um, and, and traditions that might uh, come from other societies and can we uh, gain something by considering these in creative ways today. What needs to happen in education from K to 12 to ensure better outcomes for everyone? So the answers to these kinds of questions can be advanced by, by having diverse research teams. Researchers can be mindful of tokenization so they don't just include people for the sake of uh, including and to check a box or a list in terms of inclusivity, but really respect and value the contribution the person brings, whether it's to the idea of the project or to the methodology that is employed in the research and how the data is collected and utilized and who has ownership to it and how it impacts the people. And only when we think about it in that complex intersectoral way, we will avoid tokenism. As long as our system rewards who is part of the committee, we fail the, systematically. Again, the marginalized groups. So we need to think about it in the broadest context possible to include diverse racialized individual at every stage and step of the research project. I think the starting point is actually to acknowledge that we have a problem. <laughs> I think that's the very first step, that we actually think that that the quality of our work is compromised by not having a diverse research population and by not having, um, having inc uh, an inclusive environment. So I think we need to, the first step is to actually think this is a problem and it's a problem that impedes on the excellence of the work that we can do, right? This is, this is not a charitable approach. This is actually something that if we want to create socially just research that solves problems that is actually excellent research, then we need to, we need to actually um, address this problem. So I think the first step is to acknowledge, as they say in AA, we have a problem. <laughs> I think that's the first step. Right now it's seen as, oh my God, there's one more thing I have to deal with. Um, that's how equity, diversity, inclusion is often being treated rather than it is actually foundational to my project and to the success of my project. And I think this is really where we need to change our mind. Right now, for many um, equity, diversity, inclusion requirements feel like, oh, just one more thing, another hassle that really gets in the way of me, me getting my work done, rather than my work will actually be better because my, the chances of this project of actually um, speaking to the diverse needs of diverse populations, having diverse perspectives, having things that I haven't even considered be brought to this project by people who are not like me, uh, that that actually um, makes the project better. EDI training should be a mandatory training for all people. It, we all come with so many unconscious biases in our world through our background and training and uh, very much like unconscious bias the education and awareness opportunities we offer to diverse students, faculty, staff, leaders is quite important. So I would love to see mandatory training program uh, for our community.